Hi everybody, I'm Dr. Dean Harrison from Chiropractic Biophysics Seminars and Technique and Chiropractic Biophysics Nonprofit, a Spine Research Foundation. What I'd like to do in this video presentation is discuss the cervical denarole in terms of the clinical randomized trials that my colleagues and I have performed showing that this device is capable of improving the cervical lordotic curvature, decreasing forward head posture, and also improving patients' pains, disability, and health outcomes. Now, oftentimes, patients think that they can just lie on a cervical uh, rolled pillow or a cervical towel in their bed or on the floor, and they can get the same results of improving the cervical curvature. While that's a good start, that's really not by itself going to change the cervical curvature. How do I know that? Well, these randomized trials that we're about to go through, we've studied the rolled towel as a placebo intervention as part of some of these trials. And what we find out is that lying on the cervical towel by itself does not change the cervical curvature. Now that doesn't mean don't lie on a towel rolled up under your neck at night. It's a nice thing to do. It's a start instead of lying on big pillows that put your head forward. Or better yet, get yourself a contoured pillow. For example, Denerol has a Denerol cervical pillow that is made for sleeping. However, it has not been found to change the cervical curvature by itself yet either. Really, the best evidence for changing the cervical curve is via in-office methods or this home orthotic, the Denerol. So what we're going to do is go through some of these trials that have studied the cervical Denerol so the patient and the doctors out there watching this get an idea of its effectiveness. Uh, first and foremost, I need to thank my colleagues, my friends, my research uh, allies overseas at Cairo University in Egypt and from the United Arab Emirates. Uh, we've teamed up over the last decade and we've produced several very, very important research trials showing the effectiveness of rehabilitating the cervical curvature. So without Professor Ibrahim Mustafa and Professor Aliyah Diab, uh, these studies would not be possible. So thank you very much uh, for your assistance with these uh, projects and all the time and, and hours. So does cervical spine correction improve pain, disability, and nervous system function in patient populations using the Denerol? Now, just to give you an idea of the effectiveness of the cervical denarole, we, ha we have a video motion x-ray of a patient lying over the denarole. And what you'll see when we place the denarole peak in the lower cervical spine on the x-ray, it dramatically improves the cervical curvature. So here's the jaw up here, here's the top of the neck and the base of the skull, and you can see the shadow of the denarole. And we see very deep extension at the segments that were around the peak of the denarole. It also very nicely improves anterior head translation posture when you place the denarole low enough. You will not get that same effect on a rolled towel or a pillow. So the denarole is key. When you see this type of video evidence, you realize in your mind as a patient, what does it do? Now keep in mind when you use the denarol, you're going to lie on this denarol starting at three minutes the first few sessions and then you're going to build up to where you can stay on the denarol for 15 to 20 minutes per session. Now most people it takes one to two weeks to be able to lie on the denarol comfortably in their cervical spine for 15 to 20 minutes. You don't wanna rush it too fast because it may create some soreness because your body's not used to the process of having a cervical curvature. So you've gotta follow the recommendations that your prescribing healthcare provider has set forth for you. Now, to find a practitioner that is trained in application and prescription of the cervical denarole, we're going to direct you to cbppatient.com. cbppatient.com is on the idealspine.com website. Now, if you'll go to this website, what you'll notice is when you do this as a consumer, you are able to find a patient directory uh, as part of the website. Now, cbppatient.com, there's multiple things that are on here as I pull up the website for the patient in terms of uh, what types of 
uh, information uh, a patient should read or look into when they're looking at corrective care for their cervical spine. The reality of it is though, uh, what I would like to show you here is uh, simply directing you uh, to how to use this website. So cbppatient.com is where patients can find doctors that are trained in the indications and contraindications for the cervical dental roll. Now what the consumer, the public, the patient has to realize is the dental roll is not something you can just buy on your own and use. It's, it's not a toy. It is an evidence-based prescription orthotic where you have to have an exam and an x-ray to identify are you a candidate for this device. So chiropractors that are trained in this will prescribe the dental roll for their patients that actually need this and are indicated candidates for it. So if you're out there, you're a consumer, you wanna know where to get the dental roll, you have to go to your prescription-based orthotic provider. In other words, you have to go to your healthcare provider. Now here, what we can do is we can look up multiple things on what CBP technique is, uh, which is the technique that has spearheaded the development for and, and the concepts for using the dental roll properly. So you can look at what chiropractic biophysics technique is, but the reality of it is, here's where I wanna direct you, is find a CBP trained and dental roll trained chiropractor in your area. So you just go to this uh, directory and it's really user friendly. You just type in your state, your city, your zip code, and then you hit the find button and you pull up different providers uh, in the area. For example, I'm sitting here right now in Eagle, uh, Idaho in the United States and this can be an international directory too and what I want to do is narrow my scope or my search down to 10 miles so what I'm going to do is search Eagle Idaho and you'll see that there's multiple providers here in Eagle Idaho which is really my clinic myself uh, Dr. Shirlene Harrison, uh, Dr. Joe Betts, who used to be uh, one of my uh, chiropractic uh, partners here at my uh, facility, who now has his own facility, uh, and you can look him up as well. And then multiple individuals, for example, Justin Anderson here, who is an associate doctor at my facility here in Eagle, Idaho. But hopefully what you can do as a consumer is you can easily access Denerol and CBP trained providers on this website and just call them up and say, hey, I'm interested to see if the dental is right for my cervical spine. And you'll have to go in and do an examination, spine x-rays of your neck to see if you're a proper candidate for this device. Okay, so that's the uh, dental directory and the CBP doctor directory, okay? So hopefully you'll find that uh, information valuable for you. Uh, and then what we're going to do next is cover five separate randomized trials in a very patient friendly manner to where you can see the effectiveness and the outcomes of patient populations like yourself that has used the Denerol. This is our second randomized trial on the Denerol. Randomized trial number two is entitled, Does Improvement towards a normal cervical sagittal configuration aid in the management of lumbosacral radiculopathy and low back pain, a randomized controlled trial. Now, lumbosacral means it's low back and leg pain. And this can be due to a couple different things. It can be due to compression of the nerve root uh, from the muscles. It can be due to uh, disc degeneration and disc herniation in the lower part of the low back or it can be due to degenerative and instability changes in the low back like bone spurs and arthritis down there for you know, patients that are listening to this. Now this clinical trial looked at people that had what's called discogenic low back pain and leg pain. It means they have a disc injury and a disc herniation that is contributing to the low back and leg pain. Uh, this particular trial was done by myself Professor Ibrahim Mustafa and Professor, Pr Professor Aliyah Diab, uh, both from Cairo University and the United uh, Arab Emirates. Now the background on this, what you have to realize is a lot of people don't get the concept or the connection that the cervical spine, the head and neck, 
can influence your low back and leg pain, right? One of the first ideas of this was actually published by my, myself and my colleagues back in the mid 2000s. We did this paper on uh, radiographic and biomechanical analysis of patients with low back pain. And we presented this at the International Society for the Study of the Lumbar Spine in New York, May 10th through the 14th in 2005. And what we identified is when we x-rayed full spine x-rays, the, the spine of people with no low back pain, normal controls, and x-rayed chronic low back pain subjects, we found that when we graphed them, this right here, the image that you're seeing on the, the reading right, the uh, uh, pink a aspect, if you see color, shows me the normal subject's cervical alignment. And then this is the chronic low back pain subject's cervical alignment. And what you'll notice is there's forward head translation in the chronic low back pain subjects and loss of the cervical curve. And then when we modeled this from a biomechanical perspective, using engineering analysis of compression, shear load, and bending moments, we found out that people had increased mechanical pressures in their discs and their lumbar erector spinae muscles driven by the forward head posture and driven by the loss of the curve. So we postulated that anterior head translation, forward head posture, and loss of the curve increased the mechanical loads on the low back discs and muscles and this contributed to low back pain. Furthermore, studies in the literature in the 1960s identified that when you lose your neck curve, so you take the curvature out of your neck from the side that's supposed to be in there, if you don't have one, what it does is it stretches the spinal cord nerve roots all the way down to the lo low back and leg nerves to what's called the cauda equina and the lumbosacral nerve roots. Shown here is a, a picture using a cadaver, and the cadaver is on their stomach. And this right here, this is what's called the lumbosacral nerve roots, and this is inside your low back. And it's not the spinal cord, because the spinal cord ends in the mid and upper lumbar spine, and then we have the nerve roots that run down. So these are the nerve roots in, inside your low back, and these would go down into your legs if you followed them. And what's being shown here is a loop of wire is positioned around these lumbosacral nerve roots, and it's being pulled up in the air. So it's being pulled from the front to the back, up in the air with, let's say, a 50 gram load. It's being pulled up in the air. And what you see is how much slack is in the system, or in this case, not very much. And then the bottom picture here is the exact same uh, person, cadaver, it's the exact same process, but what they've done is they've positioned the cadaver with a nice deep cervical curve as compared to the image on the top that has a straight cervical curve. So what's happening here is when you have a straight cervical curve, it's putting tension all the way down to your low back and leg nerve roots such that they can't be pulled up in the air. There's a lot of resistance there. This one, when you have a nice deep cervical curve, there's a lot of deflection and a lot of slack in the system, such that if there was a disc herniation in your low back at L4 or L5, what would happen is your nerve roots would be able to kind of fold around it, and there wouldn't be a lot of high contact shear load acting on it. That's in the bottom picture with a good neck curve. When you take the curve out, it stretches the spinal cord nerve roots like a bungee cord, and then that disc starts to put pressure on them, and that's a huge contact force. It's called high shear load, right? That shear load is not good for the nerve root. It's not good at all. It'll cause low back and leg pain. So the concept is biomechanics from the 1960s demonstrated that having a good cervical curve would be beneficial for the reduction in forces acting on your low back and leg nerve roots. And so this clinical trial, what we did is we took 80 subjects and we split them equally into one of two groups. <clears throat> Group number one got standard intervention for their low back and leg pain. Group number two got standard intervention 
for their low back and leg pain plus the cervical denaryl. And what we noticed is at the end of 10 weeks, the subjects that were allocated to the group that got the cervical denaryl, they had improved cervical lordosis. So this is the at the end of 10 weeks in one of the sample subjects. And you'll see that the denaryl improved the cervical curvature at the end of 30 sessions and it also was found to improve low back pain, disability, and leg nerve reflexes. The group that did not get the denaryl did not get curve correction and did not get the same improvement in the nerve root reflexes that we identified and tested. We looked at uh, what's called the H reflex, looking at excitability of the alpha motor neuron pool. What does that mean? It means how the muscle sensory feedback system in the low back and the lower leg muscles are working. And what we noticed is the subjects that got improved cervical curvature, their reflexes down to the leg muscle and back up to the spinal cord were faster and more efficient, okay? We then followed these subjects for six months. And six months later, the group that got the denaryl still had a good correction in their cervical curve and anterior head translation. And they were the ones that had maintained and even continued to improve in their low back pain, their low back disability, their leg pain, and the neural physiology that we studied. So this clinical trial is very important. It shows that correcting the altered cervical curvature and head translation is one of the things that should be considered to help people with low back pain and leg pain due to a disc injury. And oftentimes doctors out there, they, they mean, you know, they have the best of intentions, but maybe they miss something. And always clinical trials are trying to identify what did we miss and is there something that we might want to pursue well in this case we've identified something that potentially can help people with their low back and leg pain by adding cervical spine correction now these people will all, were all diagnosed by a trained provider they were all uh, uh, they all received x-rays so we knew exactly what to do with them and it was three times a week for 10 weeks this particular trial was actually an award-winning trial in 2015. We won one of the top European clinical trials uh, of that year at the World Federation of Chiropractic uh, research presentations. And we were very proud of that. Uh, here's the uh, award that we won. We won uh, one of the best trials across Europe that year. And it's a very important thing for researchers out there knowing that your work is that well received and it was that well done. So what does that mean for the patients out there? It means, hey, you, you need to go to a dental trained provider, a CBP, chiropractic trained provider, and you need to, to get your cervical spine, your low back checked, and see if you're a candidate for using the dental. It has a great, great potential to affect the amount of your cervical curve via correction, and also it may just be the missing piece to solving your chronic back pain and disability and leg pain and disability if you're one of those people suffering from this disorder. Thank you for your time and attention.